You are welcome to our lecture series. And this uh, series, in this series, we are looking at marriage in Africa, traditional African marriage. And for the outline, uh, first we consider introduction and uh, that will involve some definitions. There will be definition of marriage. And then we also look at some principal factors of mate selection. The, then we look at the marriage process. That is the processes one goes through to get married. And that will include the payment of the bride wealth, the marriage union, the first baby. Uh, the first baby will be the climax of the marriage process. Now, definition of marriage. Marriage has been defined by Professor Radcliffe Brown as essentially a rearrangement of social structure. Uh, this is not a popular understanding of marriage, but it's a very technical uh, definition because for the traditional African society, when marriage takes place, the existing relationships are changed. Uh, marriage always brings about changes in the traditional uh, society, so far as social structure is concerned. In the traditional African society, marriage is a union of families. It is not an individual affair. So when marriage takes place, more people are brought into the family. Uh, the Western idea is such that uh, marriage is seen as a union of two people, a man and a woman. But in traditional Africa, marriage is a union of families. Uh, in that sense, new relationships are created between the husband and the wife. They represent their families. And then there is a relationship established between the husband's relatives and the wife's relatives. And then other relatives of the bride and the groom who are interested in the marriage and the children that result from it. So basically, in Africa, when marriage takes place, two families are brought together, and a final ties established between them. Uh, their final ties uh, bring about the in-law relationship. Now, I want to look at the principal factors of mate selection. Uh, in West Africa, or Africa as a whole, marriage is based more on character and health than on romantic love which pertains in the Western European countries. Uh, in the modern world now, uh, the two are sort of blended together. Love is there, but people are expected to consider character and health as well. Uh, when a man makes a proposal to a woman concerning marriage, uh, the relatives of the man and the woman uh, do some background investigation. And in this, they consider qualities of good character and health before they give their consent. Uh, the relatives of the man, as well as the relatives of the woman, will look beyond just what the people feel for each other. And these days, pastors are also getting involved in this investigation. We look at the factors of mate selection and we want to consider what Professor Asimeng has written in his book, Social Structure of Ghana. 
uh, he brings uh, to bear the tribal factor. The tribal factor is very important to traditional people. You know, uh, here they look for uh, issues concerning proximity. That is, whether the partner of the uh, daughter or son uh, comes from their locality or is somebody who speaks their language. In tree, they will often ask, Nipano Ufrihi. When they say that, where does the person come from? They are asking whether that person really is from their tribe. And then comes the health factor. Uh, we talked about health. Uh, it's very important. If the couple are going to enjoy their marriage, uh, they have to cons consider the health uh, of their uh, partners. Then character becomes another issue. It's often said that uh, your beauty will get you a wife or a husband, but it is character that will keep you in the marriage. Right, then the level of social status or class or position. This is important, but traditional people don't emphasize this so much. Unfortunately, in the modern world now or modern society now, uh, social status and class or position has rather become the principal issue. You know, uh, people want to know the kind of work uh, you know, uh, the person is doing, or the position the person holds. And now religious affiliation has also become a critical issue. Uh, Christians, for example, are exhorted by their pastors to marry Christians. And this is based on the biblical teaching that darkness and light cannot coexist. So there are some questions that are often asked or considered. And one of the questions is, would the young man be financially and emotionally able to offer the woman enough security? So the financial standing of the man is one that the family will consider. And then emotional stability, that whether the person is a real man, whether he's emotionally strong to offer the woman the required security. Then on health, questions that will be asked would include have there been traces of infertility and impotence in the genealogical pedigree of the families of the prospective couple? That is, are there signs of infertility? Are there signs of impotence? And so the uh, families of the prospective couple will want to find out whether uh, people in the family of the couple uh, are able to have children, you know, and they want to know whether they, they, is, they, they have more children, not just one. For example, whether the grandparents were able to have children without difficulty, you know. In a family, a family where, you know, uh, the mother of the lady had only one child, and then the grandmother also had only one child. Uh, that would be worrying to uh, the husband's family because uh, to them there is a sign of infertility and they will be very careful in considering, the, in allowing their uh, son to marry from such a family. The same thing will go for uh, the man. 
then the issue of uh, character comes in. Uh, for example, uh, was there any uh, case of crim crime? Has there been any criminal offense in that family? For example, did anybody commit murder in the family? Murder is a serious crime and uh, no family will want to uh, allow their son or daughter marry someone who is coming from a family that uh, has a murder case, whether in the past or even in the present. Still on these questions, the issue of lunacy or madness, our people are very careful not to allow such uh, a trace of madness or lunacy to enter their family. You see, marriage is all about forming a relationship. And uh, the family of the man or the woman would want to stay away from the family that has issues with lunacy or madness and other congenital diseases. For example, epilepsy. Epilepsy is believed to be uh, an inherited disease. At least that is what our people believe. Something that is passed on through the blood. And uh, when there is go going to be marriage, these are issues that uh, people want to clarify. They want to be sure will not be uh, passed on to their descendants. Right, basically, our people believe marriage is a family affair and they want to be sure that they are marrying their daughter or daughter, uh, son into a family which is culturally acceptable or respectable. The marriage process. First, it begins with the declaration of intentions to one another. That is, the couple, the individual themselves, will have to declare their uh, intentions to each other. And then they in normally inform their uh, parents or relatives. And when that is done, uh, then in there is investigation of the backgrounds of the couple. Uh, in the traditional society, uh, this is easy to do. Uh, virtually everybody is naked. You know, people know uh, the backgrounds of uh, the uh, people who live in the traditional society. But in a modern society, uh, this is not easy to do. And so, uh, the investigation of backgrounds uh, in a metropolis or a city uh, is difficult. But all the same, once they get to know where the person is coming from, uh, they, they make some, uh, some phone calls. You know. And these days, uh, with churches, uh, people uh, consult pastors. And the pastors are able to also provide some backgrounds. And then also, sometimes, uh, people go to where the person is working to make some uh, consultation. So at least, the limited background investigation is done. And that may safeguard uh, the future of the couple. When the relatives or parents are satisfied that uh, there is nothing really worrying or nothing that constitutes a problem, uh, then they may go ahead with the next step and that is the knocking of the door. Uh, basically, this is the official introduction or the official declaration of intentions. So, and it involves visiting the house of the woman that is to be married. And uh, one goes to the family house or to the parents with some presence 
we call these premarital presentations. They are not refunded if the uh, request for marriage is denied. And the climax of the process is the presentation of the bride well. That is, after the initial knocking, if uh, the, there is positive response, then the two families will arrange a date when the presentation of the bride wealth or the bride price will be uh, paid. You know. But we rather prefer to call it bride wealth because the lady is not being bought. Now the bride wealth. This is a marriage payment. Uh, it is a, a payment or a presentation that goes from the family of the groom, that is the man, to the family of the bride, the woman. It is required as the legal uh, payment or presentation. And we call it bride price or bride wealth. Uh, the bride price or the bride wealth in the traditional African society is what makes the marriage legal. And it distinguishes a legal marriage from one that is not legal. And it is that which makes the marriage regular. Without the payment of the bride wealth, the marriage is not legal in the traditional sense. And it will be regarded as irregular. You know. And these days, many people are still waiting to perform this right. Though they may be living together and having children. Uh, according to Archbishop Emeritus Kwesisapong, uh, the bride wealth is a kind of uh, documentary evidence, something that attests to the fact that uh, the union between the two people is legitimate, is legal. In fact, we will call it matrimonial union. It allows the man to have rights of sexual access to the woman, the woman that becomes his wife. But we know that some people are already uh, having sexual access, even though they have not performed, uh, they have not paid their bride wealth. Uh, this is not right. And uh, women, women's organizations are trying to seek uh, legal uh, interpretation of what is going on. The bride wealth comes in different forms. It may be goods and services or wealth, that is in cash or kind. In pastoral societies, societies where uh, the traditional occupation is cattle keeping or livestock keeping. In, that, in these societies, cattle, sheep, and goods may be required as bride wealth. But among the southern uh, tribes, for example, the Akans, uh, some money and goods are given as bride wealth. In some other societies, services may also be required. That is, the prospective groom may have to uh, you know, perform, some, perform some services for the uh, father-in-law. And for example, helping the father-in-law with some farm work. Uh, this is regarded as uh, part of the bride wealth that the man is expected to pay. After the payment of the bride wealth, uh, there is marriage union. That is the union of the man and the wife. Uh, this is actually a sexual 
union. But it is also seen as a union of families. You know, the union of the man and the wife also involves the union of their respective families. And uh, in the traditional society, it's basically an alliance between the two bodies. These people, uh, the families of the uh, couple who have uh, declared their interest in their marriage and the children that also may result from it. The first baby is very critical to the union. Uh, the accounts will say PSA. The arrival of the first baby is seen as the culmination of the marriage, more or less the climax of the marriage. Uh, the first baby uh, comes to cement the union. And it is through this child that the husband and the wife are properly united. And their families too are also united because the baby is a common descendant. You know, the descendant that the two families have in common. And it's expected that there will be more of such babies. Thank you very much for uh, listening. There is part two of the presentation and we hope you will find time to uh, listen and watch that also. Thank you very much. I want to wish you Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year as you uh, join us in the marriage series, particularly with the part two. God bless you. Mm -hmm.